This is something that I've been telling artists for years. You cannot just take a photograph off of the internet and paint it. You can't. It's not legal. It's never been legal. And guess what? Andy Warhol can't do it either. It's the Inspiration Place podcast with artist Miriam Shulman. Welcome to the Inspiration Place podcast, an art world inside a podcast for artists by an artist, where each week we go behind the scenes to uncover the perspiration and inspiration behind the art. And now, your host, Miriam Shulman. Well, hey there. Welcome to the Inspiration Place. This is your curator of inspiration, Miriam Shulman. And I am so excited that you're here. So today we're talking about some breaking news. Breaking as of my recording it in May. Perhaps not breaking for you when you're listening to it in June, but I know not everybody is following this as closely as I am. So the story is... Did Andy Warhol, or rather the Andy Warhol Foundation, infringe on photographer Lynn Goldsmith? I talked about this before in episode number 215 when I learned that this case was going to appear before the Supreme Court. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the facts in the case, and then I'm going to share with you what the Supreme Court decided, and if I agree with the Supreme Court or not. Okay. So the Supreme Court started hearing this case in October. I don't know exactly how the Supreme Court works. I think arguments are given to the Supreme Court. I think they're given time to look at past legal cases. I don't know exactly how it works, but I remember, again, we talked about this in December when I had my guest, Capucine Jenkins, and the Supreme Court had not decided, and they didn't decide until May. So that was like a good almost eight or nine months that it's been, they've been working on it, which is, wow. I had no idea it takes that long for things to make its way through the Supreme Court. Anyway, so let me review the facts in the case. So back in 1981, Lynn Goldsmith took a photo of Prince. Now, she is a very prominent photographer. She makes a living off of her photography. A lot of her work has appeared on album covers. I believe that some of her work also she gets paid for in places like Rolling Stone magazine and places like that. So in 1984, Vanity Fair wanted to do a cover of their magazine, and they commissioned Andy Warhol to make a painting based on her photograph. At that time, she was paid $400. So we're not trying to decide right now if that was enough money back then. I I would assume that $400, though, in 1980s is a lot more today. I'm not exactly sure how much, but that's not what the problem is here. So she was paid $400, and it was to use her photograph to make one artwork for one cover. So licensing law, it's very specific. It'll say it covers this period of time or this many issues, whether it's an exclusive right, what kind of rights they have. And this all makes sense and it's very fair. And believe me, you want this these types of rules in place because you don't want people just coming onto the internet, going to your website and stealing pictures of your art, whether you're a photographer, or a painter, or some other kind of artist, and just slapping it onto their magazine covers, or t-shirts, or products, and not paying you. That's not fair. Now, especially with this photographer, she makes a living off of her photography. So all that was fine and legit and kosher back in 1984. And the reason they wanted to do it is that's because Prince had his purple Rain album, and they wanted to highlight him in a very artful way. So, from that same photograph, Andy Warhol made additional original paintings, and those additional original paintings have sold for millions of dollars. 
And again, that is not what's at issue here. It's not whether he has the right to make those additional artwork. And Lynn Goldsmith wasn't even suing him over the sales of those artworks. So of those additional original artworks, Warhol made 16 different versions of that art. And all of this art passed to the Warhol Foundation when Andy Warhol died in 1987. And like I said, a lot of works in this series have sold for six figures or more. And the sales of the art is not covered by the licensing agreement made with Goldsmith. So why now? Okay. So after Prince died in 2016, Vanity Fair's parent company, Connie Nass, published a special issue celebrating Prince's life. And it paid the foundation, Andy Warhol Foundation, $10,250 to use a different painting from that series for its cover. Now, this different painting was still based on the same photograph. So it's a different cover. And this time, they didn't pay Lynn Goldsmith anything or ask permission to use it. She didn't receive any money. She didn't receive any credit. So now the question remains, in order for this artwork to be considered part of fair use, so the law does allow you to use other imagery, but it has to be transformative. And the Supreme Court has said, and they've said this in the past, it's transformative if it adds something new with a further purpose or a different character, altering the first with new expression, meaning, or message. Okay. So now... So back when this whole news broke out back in the fall, most of what my beef was about the whole thing was the Supreme Court are not trained artists, they're not art historians, they're not art critics, and they're just trying to decide if something's transformative. And will they get to decide if this artwork has meaningfully been transformed? So what happened? And again, like I said, back then, my beef was really more, should the Supreme Court get to decide what is art? Should the government get to decide if this is art? And then, of course, what should happen in this case? Should Ms. Goldsmith be entitled to additional compensation for them using her art? And is there damages to her for them using it without her permission? So when we come back, we are going to discuss what happened with the Supreme Court. So stay tuned. And now, a word about in-person mastermind experiences curated by Miriam Shulman, author of the best-selling art business book, Artpreneur, and host of the Inspiration Place podcast. The Artpreneur Mastermind is a unique opportunity to connect with other artists and creatives, gain valuable insights, and take your art business to the next level. You'll walk away with your creative well filled to the brim and motivated to tackle the year ahead. You'll know exactly how to make a sustainable living from your creativity. You can meet Miriam over lunch in New York City for artist business coaching. Everything from where you are right now to your biggest hopes and dreams. Events are scheduled throughout the year for you to choose from. Lunch and museum admission is included in this in-person coaching experience you'll receive personalized recommendations. These mastermind events are limited to ensure everyone gets the attention they need. Go to shulmanart.com forward slash IRL, which stands for in real life. Again, that's shulmanart.com forward slash IRL. And now back to the show. So welcome back. <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to keep you in suspense, and especially since this is something you can easily look up, but the Supreme Court did decide seven to two, seven to two, they decided, wait a minute, how many are there? Yeah, there's nine Supreme Court justices, seven to two, they decided that, yes, Andy Warhol Foundation does owe Lynn Goldsmith, and there's a lot of brouhaha around this. Not, I think the Supreme Court made the right decision. That you look at the 
photograph and you look at the artwork and you can tell that the artwork came from the photograph. Therefore, it was not substantially transformed. And this is something that I've been telling artists for years. You cannot just take a photograph off of the internet and paint it. You can't. It's not legal. It's never been legal. And guess what? Andy Warhol can't do it either. Okay. Now, the question is, does this bring into legitimacy all of Andy Warhol's work? Well, not exactly. That's not what is at issue here. Because Lynn Goldsmith was not suing Andy Warhol Foundation over the originals, although she could. She actually could. So it's not bringing that into question. But no, you can't just copy photos from the internet. It's not legal. There are legal ways to do it. You can buy the rights to copy a photograph. You can do that from many sites. There are photography sites, iStock, Adobe, and you do need to read the fine print carefully whether derivative art is allowed. Derivative art meaning you're allowed to create an artwork from the photograph. So you can buy permissions to do that. There are also photograph sites where you have free use to do that. The photographers have given you permission to use it in any way you want without compensation. So Unsplash is another one. And there's lots of places where people will upload photographs for artists to use. So there are places you can do that but you have to do it legally because it's not fair to the photographers. This is how they make their living. And you wouldn't want anyone to do it to you. If let's just say, if you're, like I said, if you're not a photographer, if you are a painter and you have a deer and you're, I don't know, making things up now. Let's say you, you see a bear in your backyard and you paint and you take a picture and you paint the bear. And so you painted a picture from your bear, and now somebody copies you, but now they do it in oil paint. You have a watercolor painting, now they have an oil painting that's based on your artwork. No, you don't want people doing it to you. So yeah, it's not legal. So that's where the Supreme Court came down. They decided in favor of the plaintiff, Lynn Goldsmith, and the way this works, it came through the lower courts. So I think what happens is Supreme Court decided what the law is, but it's a lower court that's going to decide on the damages. Now, there is another court case right now that is in play. And to make things super confusing, the name of the artist is Prince. So when we return, I'm going to share the details of that case it's very similar. It's all about this sort of copyright issue. So when we return, I will share that case with you. Calling all artists ready to unlock their full potential and achieve art business success. Join us on August 3rd, 2023 for an extraordinary one day in person VVIP mastermind experience curated by renowned art business expert and author Miriam Schulman. This is your opportunity to take inspired action and invest in your artistic dreams. With the right guidance, you can transform your art into a sustainable, thriving business. Immerse yourself in a day filled with inspiration, growth and connections. Connect with like-minded artists and forge lifelong friendships within a supportive community that shares your passion and ambition. Gain exclusive access to personalized coaching sessions tailored specifically to your needs. Shulman's expertise and insights will guide you through the intricacies of the art market, helping you navigate challenges and seize opportunity. Discover the power of personalized attention. Every artist will receive detailed recommendations and guidance necessary to propel their art business forward. As an added bonus, you'll also receive a signed copy of Miriam Schulman's best-selling book, Artpreneur. This valuable resource will be your companion on your journey, offering tried and true strategies for turning your passion into profit. But that's not all. As part of this exclusive mastermind experience, you'll also get a one-day museum pass to see the captivating Georgia O'Keeffe exhibit at the renowned Museum of Modern Art 
immerse yourself in the beauty and inspiration of one of history's greatest artistic icon. The August 2023 Mastermind Experience is an opportunity for you to connect, grow and elevate your art business to new heights. It's time to believe in your dreams and take inspired action. Don't wait. Secure your spot today. Limited availability means that time is of the essence. Visit our website at shulmanart.com forward slash IRL to reserve your spot. Together, let's unlock your true potential and create a sustainable, thriving art business. And now back to the show. Okay, so welcome back. Now we're going to talk about Richard Prince. And he's an artist. I don't think we can actually call him a photographer. So he is, he, let's just say artist, and there is a case that is in New York, an infr- two copyright infringement lawsuits against the artist Richard Prince. And now what Richard Prince was doing was he was taking photographs that he found on the internet, on Instagram, and transforming them into artwork. And his artwork goes for... I believe multiple tens of thousands of dollars in New York galleries. And so two of the photographers who he pulled their images were not happy about this. And this court case has not been decided yet. What's happened so far is the Manhattan judge has refused to throw out the long running copyright lawsuits against the artist. So The series is called the Instagram source New Portraits, and it was a suite of images he appropriated from users of the platform and printed on canvas. (laughs) Basically, all he did was take Instagram pictures and print them on canvas. Now, sometimes he would add things to it, like he would add paint. So maybe some things were could be considered transformative. But mostly he just cropped it a little differently. Let me give you some specifics here. So one lawsuit was brought in 2016 by Donald Graham, and he accused Prince of violating the copyright of his 1998 photograph, Rastafarian Smoking a Joint. And then there's another lawsuit, and I think both of these lawsuits have now been consolidated. The second lawsuit was also filed in 2016, and this one by Eric McNatt. Prince used the portrait of Kim Gordon, who is the co-founder of the band Sonic Youth, and this was commissioned for Paper Magazine in 2014. So Prince exhibited the portrait of Gordon at Bloom and Post gallery in Tokyo in 2015. Now, both of these photographs, like you look at the photograph and you look at the art made by (laughs) Richard Prince, and it's pretty much the same thing. So in order for it to fall under fair use, the artist, and in this case, the artist is Richard Prince, has to transform it in some way. And Richard Prince was trying to say, well, I'm making a social commentary. I'm making a commentary on Instagram. So what the judge said in this is ultimately what I was saying before with the other, with the Warhol slash Prince case, not Richard Prince, but the musician Prince, can the court, can the government decide what's art? And here's the thing. Here's where the judge ruled on this. He said he can't read meaning or add meaning or use a caption to decide if it added or meaning to it. It needs to be looked basically by putting the two artworks side by side, the photographer's photograph and what Richard Prince was calling his art, and see if it was different. And looking at them, they don't look different. They're pretty much the same. So ultimately, and it was Judge Stein, in this case, Judge Stein sided with the plaintiff's contention. The work did not achieve the satirical or social commentary purposes required to legally qualify for fair or transformative use. So this case is still in court, and these lawsuits against Richard Prince will continue. 
but this is a more blatant example of how you can't take photographs from the internet. I'm so sorry. There are legal ways to do it. If you want to paint a Rastafarian, you don't have one. You know, I'm going to look and see if you right now if you can find one. All right, when we come back, I'll let you know where you can legally copy a picture. Until then, stay tuned. Picture this, a two-hour art business coaching experience in the heart of New York City at the prestigious Metropolitan Museum of Art. Join us as we indulge in a transformative mastermind lunch in the elegant members' dining room overlooking the breathtaking beauty of Central Park. This exclusive experience offers more than just a gourmet meal. It's a unique opportunity for personalized coaching and expert guidance for your art business. Imagine sitting amongst fellow artists surrounded by the world's most renowned works of art as you receive personalized coaching from art business expert Miriam Schulman. This is your chance to gain invaluable insights and strategies to take your art business to new heights. Feast your senses while you fuel your body and mind as you bask in the atmosphere of creativity and possibility. But this mastermind lunch offers more than a satisfying meal. It includes museum admission, granting you access to the captivating exhibitions housed within its hallowed halls. Immerse yourself in the artistic brilliance of centuries past and draw inspiration from the masters who came before us as you wander through the museum's galleries, let the beauty of the artwork ignite your creativity and invigorate your entrepreneurial spirit. Feel the energy of the city, the passion of fellow artists, and the belief that you can achieve greatness in your art business. This two-hour art business coaching experience is a unique opportunity to combine art, learning, and culture. It's a chance to gain personalized insights, network with fellow artists, and nourish your creative soul. Don't miss out on this extraordinary experience. Reserve your spot today and join us for a mastermind experience to elevate your art business, immerse yourself in the beauty of Central Park, and draw inspiration from the world, class artwork that surrounds you. Go to shulmanart.com forward slash IRL to secure your place at this exclusive event. Let Miriam guide you on a journey of artistic growth and artpreneur success. And now, back to the show. All right, welcome back. So I just went on to two different sites. I went on to Unsplash. And on Unsplash, if you type in Rastafarian, you will get 28 photos to choose from. And most of these actually do include a human in the photo. If you go onto a place like Adobe Stock, where you have to pay for the photographs, and you type in Rastafarian, and you want to include people in those images, 13,000 choices come back. And I'm just gonna click onto one of them just to see how much it costs to. All right. So there are different choices with how much it costs you. A standard license is free with your trial. And I, I think Adobe Stock has a monthly subscription, or you, you can buy it for this particular one. Extended license is $79, but you can actually buy a lot of images on the site for the use that you need it for, for relatively, not, not that much money, like six to $10. Extended license is something where if you want to put this onto a book and it's the cover image, and now not only are you making one artwork from it perhaps, but you're selling that image over and over and over again, and that's what you would need an extended license for. All right, my friend. Well, I hope that you got a lot out of this episode. So I know that my thoughts about this are a little controversial. Not everyone agrees with me. I would love to hear from you. So you can DM me at Shulman Art. That's S-C-H-U-L-M-A-N-A-R-T. Let me know what you think. Or right below the podcast on my page, which is you can go to shulmanart.com forward slash 264 because this is episode 264. You can comment there. 
Let me know what you think. Do you think the Supreme Court got it right? Just so you know, the people who disagreed was Justice Roberts and Kagan. Justice Kagan were in the minority opinion. They believe that it did not take into account art history. And I don't think you should be taking into account art history. The law is the law. So is it legal or is it not? And it really, honestly, it's just not fair for us artists to copy photographers' art. You have to respect other artists. Photographers are artists too. And you don't want people copying our paintings and getting away with it. So same things should be true for the photographs. All right, my friend. So that's it for today. I'll see you the same time, same place next week. Until then, stay inspired. Thank you for listening to the Inspiration Place podcast. Connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash shulmanart, on Instagram at shulmanart, and of course, on shulmanart.com.